Today, we'll be building a responsive widget boulder for our Flutter app. Hey guys, welcome to the two-part video tutorial for responsive UI. Today, we'll be building the base widget that will give us the sizing information required to build smart and responsive widgets as well as screen layouts. And in part two of this tutorial, we'll build an actual UI where you can see the benefits of building your sizing into the base widget of your architecture. And with that said, let's start the tutorial. We'll start off by creating a Flutter project called Responsive Architecture. Once that completes, we can go ahead and open it in Visual Studio Code. The problem that I'm trying to solve today is easily answered by the following question. How can we provide all the relevant information at a widget level to modify our UI according to the screen size? And the solution that I came up with is by building a base widget that gives you the opportunity to build your UI using custom screen information compiled by you specifically for that goal. So instead of making use of media query in every view or widget where you want to build responsive UI, we'll build that into a base widget using the media query as well as the layout builder so that we can make smart decisions at a widget level as well. For the sizing information, there's four things that I'd like to have available for any widget to build from. The first is the orientation. The second one is the device screen type, which will be either mobile, tablet or desktop. And the third one is the screen size. And fourth, we want the local widget size. This will reflect the bounds of the widget that you are currently building. And the way we'll implement the functionality is by using two sets of functionalities provided by Flutter. The first one is the media query that I spoke about as well. We'll use the screen size, the width and the height to determine what device we are on. And secondly, we'll use the layout builder, which gives us the box constraints of the current widget being built. That will allow us to provide a size for the local widget that we can use to make smarter decisions at a widget level as well. So before we create our sizing information model, we need the enum that will represent our device screen type. So under the lib folder, you can create a new folder called enums and inside you can create a new file called device screen type. Then inside this file, you can create a new enum called device screen type. We'll give it three values, the first one being mobile, and then tablet, and then desktop. Now keep in mind that this will not reflect the actual device. Instead, it will reflect the screen type that we are expecting to render for. Then we can create a new folder called UI, and inside that folder, we'll create a new file called sizing information. This will be the information that we compile and send back to our builder function to build the appropriate UI with. We want the orientation in this model. So we'll add a new orientation value called orientation. Then we want our device screen type and we'll name that device screen type. The third property on this model will be of type size and we'll call it screen size. This will reflect the entire device screen size. And the last property will be the local widget size, which will also be of type size. We'll pass all of this in through the constructor and we'll use named parameters instead of positional parameters. Then to make some things easier for us to print out on the screen, we will override the toString method and return all the values for each of the fields. We can create a new file under the UI folder called base widget. We can import the material package and then we'll create a new stateless widget called base widget. Now you can name this something more appropriate if this functionality will be standalone for you and it won't be used as a base widget in an architecture. We'll start off by adding our builder function to the top. It will be returning a widget and the function will take in the build context and then it will also take in a sizing information model. We'll call it builder and we'll pass it in through the constructor of the base widget. So the first thing I want to get done is just creating an instance of the sizing information and then executing our builder function to return our widget for us. We'll create a sizing information object locally in the build function and then return that through the builder. Next up, we'll create a views folder under UI and inside we'll create a home view file 
This will be so that we can display some kind of UI to indicate to us that this functionality is actually working. We'll start off by importing the material package and then we'll create a new stateless widget called home view and the build function will return a base widget that takes a builder. The builder function requires the context and then the sizing information and it has to return a widget. So what we'll do is return a scaffold, the body of the scaffold being a center and the child for that center widget will be text and the text we're passing in will be the two string value of the sizing information. Then you can head to the main file and update the home of your material app to return the home view. Then I want to set up the project so that we can easily test our new responsive logic. For that we'll add a new package called device preview to the pub spec. Then we'll wrap the my app widget in a new widget called device preview. We can import the package and then for the material app builder property we'll pass it the, the app builder from the device preview package. When you run the code now your app will appear a bit different. It will appear inside of a device inside of your emulator and in the top left you'll have a little settings cog where you can change the rotation as you and you can also change the device type that you are viewing on. This will allow us to easily test without having to rebuild the app or start up different simulators and emulators for different devices. Now this works better on larger emulators since you can see more of what's on the screen but for now I'll just use my default Pixel 2 emulator that's stretched to be a bit larger. Okay so on to the first property of our sizing information. The first thing I'd want is the orientation. So for that we'll get the media query data out and store that in a local variable called media query and for the orientation of the sizing information we will pass back media query dot orientation and then you can see in the device preview that it is showing the orientation of the device in the centered text. The next thing I'd like to get out of the way is the device screen type. For the device screen type we will create a new function that returns the device type. For that we'll create a utils folder under the lib folder and inside that utils folder we'll create a new file called uiutils. Then we'll create a top level function called get device type and this takes in media query data that we'll use to determine what device we are on. So before we do the implementation I'd like to go over how we'll determine the type of screen that we are on. To figure out what the device is you need to look at the width of the physical device and since we can't do that for that functionality you need to look at your rotation because as you can see if you swap rotation the width will be larger since the height is now swapped to the width and the other way around. So the first thing we want in this function is to get the orientation from the media query and then we'll have a local variable called device width which we will set as zero and to determine the actual device width where actual is in air quotes we'll use the media queries height when the phone is in landscape mode because that will be the device's width and when the phone is not in landscape mode we will use the width of the size returned by media query and that will give us an accurate representation of the device width. Then we can go ahead and set up our breakpoints for the types. If the device width is larger than 950 we will return desktop since we are probably past tablet size. If the device width is larger than 600 we will return tablet. And for the rest of the sizes that's not covered by those two conditionals will return mobile. Then you can head back to the base widget and for the device type in the sizing information we'll call our top level function get device type and we'll pass in the media query. If you change your sizes you should see now on the screen it says the device type is mobile. If we go to the airpad 2 you can't see it because it's so small on the screen. I should have probably made the size a bit bigger but I did not think of that while I was recording the code. But it does say tablet on screen. And if you go to the 
watch, which is a bit smaller, it still says mobile, and that you can add as your own condition. But if you go to the free form and you adjust the width, you can see that it goes between all of those sizes as you are scaling down, which means that this will be perfectly fine to use in a browser as well. The next thing we want to pass back for our sizing information is the screen size and that we can simply get by getting the size from the media query. The last thing we want is the size of the actual widget that is being built. For that functionality, we'll have to wrap our builder in a new widget called layout builder. The builder of this widget will return to us its build context as well as a box constraints object. This will contain the max width and height of the widget that's currently being built. Once we define our builder, we can go ahead and move our sizing information construction into that builder function. And then for the local widget size, we want to create a new size object where the first parameter will be the max width and the last parameter will be the max height. When you save this now, the preview should update automatically, but you'll see the same sizes for the screen size as well as the local widget size. To show you why we want the local widget size, we'll just wrap the text in a column. We'll set the main axis to min so that it still shows up in the center. And then we'll create a new container. We'll give it a height of 150. We'll set the color to blue so that you can see the background. And then for the child of this container, we'll use the base widget. In this context, you could name it size aware builder or responsive widget builder. We'll supply the builder of the base widget with a text widget and we'll print out the sizing info of that builder within the container. And now as you adjust your widget, you'll see the sizing changing on the local widget size. So as we added margins, the width of your local widget size went to 275 and your height stayed at 150. Now all of these things can be used to build a very smart and responsive UI at the point where you can have your icons adjusting based on the size that they have available depending on the responsive size that other UI elements take up on your screen. This is all for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Next week I will come up with a UI that will show you the benefits of this because it's something that I actually have been working on. It will be in a more abstract form since I can't share all of my clients code with you. But you'll see next week how you can use this architecture to build a truly responsive UI for the mobile device and up to the desktop size. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week.